Pastor Benny Hinn is celebrating 40 years of ministry, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. Look to our precious Jesus today, who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. And to Jesus belongs the glory and the praise. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. He loves you. He wants to deliver and heal you. With me again today on the program is Dr. Braverman. You know, I love showing you the power of God. I love to show you our conferences, FAR conferences. But every so often, it is so good to have a doctor like Dr. Braverman who can inform us. You know, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, the Bible says. We need to be educated and informed about health. You know, I was watching the story of Louis Pasteur a few days ago, and I was amazed how that dear man was opposed back in France. Yes. The man who came up with so much that is still helping us today. That's why we use the word pasteurization. It's because of him. And you see how these incredible gifted men fought mm -hmm. to bring health to multitudes. And, I, and he saw unseen germs the way we know there's unseen evil in the world. If men only had understood the unseen God, mm -hmm they would have not crucified him in a metaphorical sense during his life. So I'm a lover of Pasteur because he was willing to carry his cross through the scientific persecution so that we now have the ability to understand that infection and hygiene rules that are all over Moses in the Bible are real. It's really amazing yeah, that it was real. in the Bible. God gave it to us years ago in the scripture and it took Louis Pasteur, a French uh, really, who was a chemist, to to show the world that God's yeah. word is true. I mean, the cadavers. And if you, you touch know what? The, yeah. And you know what he you said know? on his deathbed? Yeah. He said, "The day will come, men will realize that the sickness of the soul is as important as mm -hmm. sickness in the body." And I think probably he was a Christian. I don't know, but I look at you today and I see another doctor who is just fighting the same old diseases people have been fighting for so long. In 30 years of work, he has written and put together a wellness manual. Now, we'll tell you about this at the end of the program. Can I shake your hand? That I want to thank you, really. Thank you. That you have put together this for humanity. Uh, patients that have come to him over the last 30 years, since 1979, asked him questions about certain disease, how to prevent certain disease. He decides to put their questions down and answer them. And then he went even beyond that. I do want to talk to you about health in general right now. Then we'll talk about this wellness manual. Let's talk about nutrients. When, first of all, did you discover that nutrients are beneficial to the health of the body? Was that something you stumbled into? Uh, that's, that starts with my mother 35 years ago giving me articles that sugar will make you moody, that nutrients and spices and a good breakfast will change your life, that eggs were packed with nutrients and that fish oil was good for you. So basically, like a lot of people, my mother was a really good nutritionist and she really knew a lot about eating right and had fantastic soups, and the doctors that were training me were falling over dead from smoking. They were dying on the street. One doctor, a cardiologist in his 40s, fell over dead, trained me, told me that there was no role for nutrition, the body wasn't a temple of the Holy Spirit, and he fell over dead on First Avenue. And so I had a lot of witnesses. In fact, I even worked at a center, the Brain Research Center in Princeton, and I was able to get from my mentors that the brain controls the body as God controls the earth, that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and that healing is all about um, diet and nutrition, but even also from Louis Pasteur. I mean, I learned from him. I mean, he validated Moses that you shouldn't touch a cadaver and that there's such sure. a thing as clean and unclean. I mean, uh, we worked in on cadavers in our in the basements with formaldehyde. Turned out it was making a student sick, and so I continued to be blessed from Moses the doctor to uh, Jesus the doctor to Pasteur the doctor. And but ultimately, like so many sons. My mother got me early 
with you know brewer's yeast and vitamin D and supplements and watch the sugar, which I didn't know then. You know, it says in the Bible, beware of sweet dainties. My mother just says, don't eat that Bosco, don't eat that sugar. And you know, the fat is for the Lord. I mean, it says a lasting ordinance that the blood and the fat are not for you. No. You know? Let me talk to you about that. Why is fat bad for the body? It's a toxin storage. You see, our society right now has a different demon than legion, all right, which is the Roman legions in Israel. It has a demon of industry. We have, some of us, nine toxic metals from arsenic to cadmium to mercury to lead that we shouldn't have, pesticides and plastics in our body. And so we need internal washing. And guess where those toxins are stored in the animal kingdom? They're stored in the shellfish and they're stored in the fat of animals. So when you're eating the fat of animals, you're not just getting grease and raising your triglycerides and cholesterol, you're getting a high rate of toxic pesticides, plastics, and metals that you don't need in your body. So the fat is filled with toxins and the blood I is filled with antibodies. That. That's amazing. Yeah, and the blood is filled with antibodies. So there were studies where people drank blood and they found antibodies were developed. And, and so look, Moses the doctor has been validated in science over and over again as Jesus the healer has been validated but over now, and over let again. Let me ask you about fat and, and, and mm. Things like this. Now, some people will eat a steak every so often, and they'll say, "Do it medium well or well." It comes and it looks like raw on the inside. Is that good or bad for you? Well, I'm not a big fan of eating uh, rare steaks. I mean, I think that person should stay away from as much blood as possible. Why as is a rule. blood bad? Well, blood has got a lot of antibodies and a lot of chemicals in it. But certainly fat is a bigger problem for most people, the fat in chicken skin and the fat in, in the fried foods and, and greasy foods. They need to get into olive oil. I mean, you know, the olive trees were sitting in Jerusalem when Jesus was crucified. They'll be sitting in Jerusalem, the same tree, when he returns. But now when yeah. you cook with olive oil, they, they say the fat content goes up. So well, can you, you cook can, it or not? Well, you can cook a little bit with olive oil. Uh, but, you know, the reality is it's not as good as taking it and dipping, let's say, dip your whole wheat bread in olive oil What's the and make a spiced olive oil. In other words, you can add some rosemary to the olive oil and some mm. basil and that can liven up flavor. You see, the spices will keep you away from the fat tooth, the sweet tooth, the blood tooth, all right, which is the appetite. And are they also not good for you? They are very nutritional. Mm. Yeah, the olive, the pure olive oil. No, I'm talking yeah. about those, like the, if you add oregano or other things. The pure spices. People don't know how to live. It's very complicated to live in this generation. They need to learn how to sleep seven hours. We have all sorts of techniques to help people sleep seven hours, from electrical devices to nutrients to medicine to balancing progesterone. Then when you wake up in the morning, you, you should be taking fiber at night, and you should be able to have regular bowel movements, and you should be able to wake up and have generally plain yogurt with cinnamon and other spices. Do you know I've been doing that, yeah. and to my shock, my waist went down. Less bloating, but even you can add cold. I mean, I don't need yeah. to lose weight, but I actually lost. Good. Uh, I, I need to take my pants and take them in again now, my suits, because I began taking in the morning the yogurt, fat-free yogurt, with, the, with, the, with those nuts you talk about in your book. Right. And, re, and don't forget the egg. And you the can, cinnamon. Right? Huh? You can rebirth. You, if you're bored of cinnamon after a while, you can put allspice on your fruit. Sometimes that does it. But also rebirth the egg. People can buy eggs that are packed with fish oil. But they tell you not to eat the yellow. Yeah, that, that's a mistake. The, the, they're completely wrong. The reality is people make more cholesterol than they can ever eat. And the cholesterol problem is really because people are eating sugar and processed foods. Listen. It says that the leaves of the tree of life. Wait, say that again. It's because of sugar and processed food yeah, that the, cholesterol. They're making your, your cholesterol metabolism get screwy, and also your decline in hormones are messing you so up. So it's not the eating of the eggs or eating, eating butter. No, you know what? They did studies years ago, and they gave uh, certain egg substitutes to animals, and they all died. You know, they didn't do well. You can't live off the white of the egg. You really can't. It's, it, well, you, I think, you know, God put the yellow on the inside for a reason. But yeah. I do want to ask you, yeah. I mean, you just said processed food and sugar can raise your cholesterol. Yeah. When you eat, right, good deed begets good deed as bad deed begets bad deed. Everyone knows this spiritually. When you get into a rhythm of living and loving well, mm. the same thing goes with eating right. 
when you get into the right rhythm, you wake up in the morning and you're getting yourself your green tea or your coffee, you're getting yourself adequate fiber, you're getting four or five spices with your breakfast, you're getting fish oil powered eggs, you're getting cod liver oil, you're taking some supplements for whatever illnesses you have. Let's say you have a prostate problem, you take a prostate vitamin, let's say you have a fatigue problem, you take a brain energy vitamin. Then you go to the next level. When are you gonna plan your exercise? Everyone has to think about their life. They're not Why thinking about is it. exercise Exercise important. covers a multi to the sins, you've been given a body, you have to move it. The reality mm -hmm. is you have to stretch, move. Exercise is an antidote. It gives more blood flow. It makes your own body heal. It raises your metabolism. Every hour you put into exercise, you probably get five hours more life. I mean, the reality is that exercise should be critical. Every and hour gets you five hours of life. That's my belief. And the reality is most people, as they get older, have to warm up longer, <clears throat> excuse me, longer and longer. They really have to, they have to, you know, work way up a treadmill. Now, walking briskly on a treadmill is the way to go. Most people, their knees don't last. They have to swim more often because that takes weight off. They have to rotate their exercises, and they don't have a plan. So most people are in a rut. They're exercising the same exercise. They're eating the same foods. They're using the same spices. They're, you know, they're rosemary people and paprika people. That's why I tell, this is what you need to do. You need to have a spice rack on every table. That's the antidote to this black and white generation, meaning pepper and salt. You need a spice rack, and it's $50, and you get yourself a spice rack. I just bought one because and, you and told you gotta, me. you got to let it sit there, and then yeah. you got to get a tea rack, all right, a tea rack. And then you got to get certain types of fish from Alaska where it's a no pesticide fish. So now you got the fish of Jesus where he's feeding the fish. You got the seasonings of Leviticus, you know, and you got the teas which are from Book of Revelation, the healing of the generation. So now you got cornerstones, spices, teas, Protein now, and just in case no one heard you before, why are spices important and why are teas important? All right, I'll give you an idea. Cumin and turmeric, which are anti-dementia all right, nutrients, what they do is the brain clogs up with iron and rust. So most of our brains actually get old and rusty. Remember I said you burn up, you dry up, you swell up, and you turn to stone. Yeah. Part of the turning of stone in the brain is you actually uh, clog up with too much iron in the brain. And cumin removes that iron. All right, and turmeric does too. The brain health is the basis. So you got cornerstones. Now you see what he's saying is yeah. brain health is the key to your health. Yeah. So rather than taking drugs and messing your body up, Make sure your brain, we're not talking about the mind, we're talking about the brain, the actual organ, must be healthy. Must be healthy. And he talks about this in this wellness manual and a whole lot more. I want to ask you about obesity. You had said to me that this was like the number one killer. How can people reverse that? So obesity is a statement that our culture has lost its value of how to live healthy. All right, how to live healthy because look, we spend more on healthcare than anyone in history and we're fat and obese and overweight generation. And when you're obese, your pressure goes up, your liver gets fatty, it turns to chicken fat, you get more stones, more dementia, more strokes, and there's 30 other illnesses, there's so many cancers. You know, when you're overweight, that's the number one cause of cancer in America is obesity. Number one cause of heart disease, number one cause of type 2 diabetes is obesity. So obesity comes from brain chemistry and losing the cornerstones. When you wait, 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 slow down. Brain obesity comes from, from abnormal brain chemistry and losing the cornerstones of living correctly. Okay, so how do we change that chemistry? Every day you have to, you have to go from high calories and few nutrients to massive nutrients and few calories. Okay, now some people who are struggling, you know, well, they'll get like on these diets, but often they don't work. They need to understand the power of teas, the leaves of the tree of life from Revelation. Tea, here's what I drank today. I had a black green tea combination, an oolong green tea. Oolong's a very powerful Chinese tea that cuts appetite. And I squeezed in five lemons and a little bit of lime. Now, to most people, that's a little tart, but I enjoyed it. Now, you know what I just did? I packed with lemons have 30 or 40 nutrients that almost no one knows what they are. I mean, I know them because you can get your sheet and I can mail anyone a sheet on any food. And the reality is that I've, I added 200 nutrients. You wanna know how many calories I took in? 
with that tea and lemon? Tell me. Yeah, I don't know, five, you know, five. So I had, you know, I might have 4,000 nutrients. But these teas, you said, they also do what? They prevent they you from eating They kill appetite. Water. They give you antioxidants. They, they kill appetite. They're brain preservatives. They function almost like brain salt. Salt wow. is a preservative of neurotransmitters. As our neuro. Are you telling me that the certain teas, if you drink them, they actually help you with not, you know, craving food? Is that oh, it? Oh, absolutely. Tremendous appetite controllers. And the same thing goes with spices. They I can, have never heard that. Tea before. is an appetite suppressor, as are spices. Wherever tea. Spices is, too. Yes, absolutely. And you can, you've got to rebirth every meal, and you got to, you get shocked. I mean, people get shocked. They tell me, I just added caraway to my soup. And my soup, I've never had, I haven't done caraway in years. The average person that's listening doesn't have the resources to have $30 New York City meals. They need to know that a spice rack will rebirth their food. You know, they can add fennel to an egg and rosemary to an egg and caraway and black sesame seed. And there's so many surprising things like paprika and turkey with a little bit of oregano. And you can just keep doing spice combinations. And we have a list of some of my favorite spice combinations and they kill appetite, but it's right under our nose. And we have faith, as you have faith, that many of the truths in this world have been lost. They're lost, and I'm trying to give people new medical truths. Listen, you, he wrote this incredible wellness manual. I want you to talk about this because this is information that took you 30 years to put together. Now, tell the people why you wrote this and why they need it. I started out writing them as handouts. I used to give them out as early as uh, the first one was probably written for another doctor in 1976 on inositol calming the brain. It took 30 years, but it showed up in the textbooks of psychiatry that inositol, a B vitamin, works like Valium on the brain and calms it down. And people just kept saying to me, inositol, I never heard of it. How do you spell it? What does it do? How does it work? Where do you eat it? Where do you get it? And I said, oh, I tell them, and then they forget it because it's so new to so them. So you went and wrote it So I said, on. that's it. I have to write you a handout, and you have to take it home with you, and you have to study it and think about it. And then people would ask me, oh, I got angina. And look, angina is, you know, when you get heart muscle cramping. Mm. But there's examples of people in the 1890s which saw themselves out of angina. So they couldn't quite get the idea that you could actually exercise aerobically the heart muscle. Ken Cooper made a big deal of this in the aerobics books. But people didn't get it that, you know, that angina didn't have to just be drugged, that you could slowly and gradually strengthen your heart muscle to, to build what they call collaterals or extra highways. And these concepts got too difficult. So I would write down what they kept asking me, and I'd say, here's a handout. And then I, you know, people would ask me, oh, there's an FDA approved device for anxiety. I have so much anxiety, I can't seem to control it with prayer. And it's medical anxiety. It's their brain, not their mind. They're right. Their sins are forgiven, but they still don't feel right. And so I'd write down techniques for relieving anxiety that are brain chemical techniques. And then I kept going through, uh, you know, hysterectomies. In fact, the three great areas where people overutilize surgery are their brain chemistry is not right. They're confused, meaning their memory and attention is confused, or a lot of people have too many other medical illnesses they don't know about. So the reason why they can't get healed of heart disease is because people don't realize they also have arthritis and rheumatoid and immune problems. In other words, most people when they hit 40 and 50 accumulate five and six and 10 hidden illnesses, and disease is like a lion looking and lurking at, inside your body trying to get you. So I wrote these handouts to give people power to fight back and clean out their bodies. Now listen, of before we talk about this, I would like you just quickly to address something you had mentioned to me about reversing heart disease naturally. Yes. And that you've canceled, you actually canceled bypass well, surgery well, in the uh, lives of many vir people. Uh, yeah, virtually every bypass patient who's come to me over the years, we've com combined medical, nutritional, lifestyle treatment to avoid the bypass. And you have all this in this book and more. I have the summary, the outline of a total new way of living using the power of spices, lifestyle, teas, herbs, exercise, diagnostic techniques, the use of computers, the use of uh, electrical therapies. 
I have a way of well, pouring I'm out talk, healing. I'm this is for you pouring you out can... of healing through a, in a harvest of healing okay, in our wanna... society. Because, you know, the world won't listen to us. They won't listen to believers unless we can do something for them. That's the way people now, are. Now, let's just before we yeah. say goodbye about heart disease. It's the, one of the number one killers in America. Uh, uh, it can be reversed, but how long? Well, uh, you know, first of all, one of the things with heart disease is still shocking. I still believe niacin is a better treatment than most statin drugs for high cholesterol because it builds extra heart vessels. So niacin builds extra it vessels. It builds collateral. It helps wow. you build new highways in your heart by giving that flushing, that opening up of circulation. So I believe there's another example of a natural agent. Now, there are some naturally occurring Chinese herbs that have statins in them. And again, you have the ability to take natural Lipitors and natural Zocars. And of course, many of our patients still sometimes have to take a drug. Now, how far can we reverse heart disease? Some patients get a reversal of heart disease for 20 years. I mean, they do incredible. They get, you know, they lower their blood pressure. They get heart disease at 40 and 45, and they get their first heart attack, and then they don't have another one for 26 years, or they don't have any problems, and they die of something else. You know, uh, that is the reality, is that many illnesses can have the clock turn back 15 years, like Hezekiah had death turned back 15 years by Isaiah. So we look at 15 years as a general ballpark of where we want to reverse disease. Early skin cancer, early uh, lupus, colitis. We've had patients who are supposed to go for surgery for colitis. We have patients who are supposed to go for back surgery. A lot of the back surgeries never happen in our That's practice. Amazing. A lot of hysterectomies. Back, so you've canceled back can surgery. And canceled hysterectomies. How, how, did you do with, uh, how did you do that? Most with of the surgery? people with the back surgery are not sleeping. Sometimes they're overweight. Sometimes they have muscle pain on the disc. So oh. if you can relax the muscles, you don't have to have the major well, now, Doc, surgery. You cover everything in this book. Listen, precious partners, this was written for his patients. This was not written for the public. He was so concerned for the people he was treating that he wrote this over the last 30 years. It took him 30 years to put this together. You cover everything and you show him how to prevent, what to do if you have it, what foods target those diseases. Tell me now about those incredible diets you have yeah, in there. There's a diet for over 50 conditions. The reason why is, I'll give you some examples. 50 conditions, you have diets for 50 diets. conditions. Head, you know, a lot of people forget the headache diet. They, they know that wine does it, but they don't know that the chemicals in red wine that give you a headache are also in other foods like nuts, etc. A lot of people with celiac that have osteoporosis, they can't tolerate wheat, but they don't realize there are 10 other foods with that problem. A lot of people with kidney stones aren't avoiding the oxalates, the, the foods that are causing the kidney stones. A lot of people with goiters, meaning an enlarged thyroid, they don't know that certain foods will accelerate that goiter. So there is so much information out there that I realize that it's too much. People have seven minutes with their doctor. 10 minutes with their doctor. They need to have their doctor in the house. We know that. And the, this is it right yeah, here. They know that, yeah. The, you know, the old story in the Talmud was that the, how could God be in every person? And the rabbi says, the sun shines in every house. Well, we need a doctor in the house too. And this, and this is, is really, this is, it. this is a doctor in your house who's telling you what to do to prevent every disease. I mean, you even deal with dentistry. I do because a lot of my patients came to me with such gum recession. They didn't realize there's some herbs that can help gum recession. There's some drugs that help with gum recession. Amazing. I mean, the number one cause of tooth loss is osteoporosis. So people don't understand that either. That, you know, when you lose a tooth, it's the same as like fracturing a leg. You should run and get your bone density checked. They just don't know. Or if, you, if you're hunched, you see someone with a curved spine or losing height, all of a sudden your kids look kind of too tall to you. They don't get it. And once you lose your foundation, which is your bones and your muscle, I mean, that's like losing your foundation Listen, in a house. We can Falls sit and apart. talk about this for weeks. you got to get this. It's all in here and a whole lot more for a gift of $100 only to the ministry. You will not find this in any bookstore or any place else. And I thank you for making this available to our partners. You are very kind. And also with that come these two interactive CDs. 
And what do they do? Well, they help people find information and search a little Quick, bit quicker. Yeah. You know, it, they can use the index. They can. Some people like disks. Some people want to send things to their friends. Let's face it, that's what they do, and they have the ability to get it right up on their computer and move with it. Okay, this is for 25. This is for 100. For a gift to the ministry, and I tell you, get this today, precious Jesus. We lay our hands on these needs, and Lord, we pray, meet every need in the lives of your people whether it be physical, spiritual, emotional, in Jesus' mighty name, for your glory, amen and, and amen. amen. I've been asking as my partner to send in pictures of loved ones and friends. Our people are praying 24 hours a day in this prayer room for you. And I don't want you missing the opportunity to be prayed for. Let's believe for when we come together in prayer, in, in agreement, things always happen. Get ready, your miracle is surely on the way. Persecution of Christians has reached historic levels with millions worldwide living in fear and suffering for following Jesus Christ. Some estimates indicate that 350 million believers are facing torture, imprisonment, oppression, discrimination, and death. Horrifying statistics reveal that every five minutes a Christian dies for his or her faith. Pastor Benny Hinn's heart has been broken as he's seen the news stories and heard reports from those who are enduring persecution. And he is asking you to join him now in fervent prayer for those who are facing unspeakable consequences as they stand strong for their beliefs. We must not forget them. Go to the ministry website at www.bennyhinn.org and sign up to join prayer warriors around the globe in praying for persecuted Christians. The prayer of agreement is a powerful spiritual force for effecting change in the natural world. So join this global initiative to intercede for persecuted Christians today. Join Pastor Benny Hinn in Israel November 1st through the 10th and walk where Jesus walked from Galilee to Jerusalem. Visit the ministry website for more information and to download a brochure. Experience Israel with Pastor Benny Hinn. You'll never be the same. Thank you, Pastor Benny, for allowing me to grow here in my father's house. Pastor Benny, thank you for the food. Pastor Benny Hinn continues to enthusiastically provide support for thousands of children in many parts of the world. Food, clothing, and shelter, along with spiritual and educational instruction, are just a few of the necessities provided for these precious boys and girls. A recent visit to Manila confirmed the effectiveness of the ministry's plans and goals. Your gifts are so important to us. As you saw this afternoon when they got their package, how excited they were to open that. And there was a shirt, pair of pants, a dress. Those things mean so much to them. And then having a, a beautiful meal together, those are the things that you can see. But you know, beyond that, I want you to know that we're also here to talk about their hearts and to talk about their maturity and their walk with the Lord. What you're a part of is a child's life, discovering their inner heart and their inner potentials. And you've been a part of that. Thank you from the bottom of my heart.